In this video, we're going to continue our coverage of the multiprocessing module in Python. And what we're going to be doing is just going over the logging module and specifically some of the more specific logging components of the multiprocessing module that will allow us to print out some information that might be of interest to us for whatever we happen to be making use of the multiprocessing module for. So in order for us to get started here, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just import some modules that we'll be making use of to see this in action. And right below this import of time, I'm just going to say import logging. And I should also say that, by the way, I'm using the code from the previous video where we made use of locks. So if you check out the video on multiprocessing locks, you can check out that code and the code is available on my GitHub. And all I'm doing here is I'm just modifying that code from the previous video. So you can either download that code from the previous video and follow along to what I'm doing here, or you can just download the code that will be linked in the description of this video, which will have everything that we'll be covering in this video. So uh, going on there, all I'm doing here is I'm just importing logging. And by the way, if you have Python installed and you followed along thus far, logging module comes standard in Python, so it doesn't require any third party um, imports or installations, I should say. So you should already have that on your machine. And then what I'm going to do is import some logging specific criteria from the multiprocessing module. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that on a separate line. So I'm just going to say from multiprocessing, import and we're going to import two things that we're going to use one is called log to standard error and then log or let's I should say git logger so we'll be using log to standard error to actually instantiate the logger and to get it to output the log information to the terminal and then we'll be using git logger to actually instantiate a logging object from the multiprocessing library and then we'll be using logger or I should say login to actually specify at what level we want the output to be at. So there might be a level like information as to what is actually occurring in our program. There might be something which is a more specific thing like debugging information. In this video we're just going to look at logging uh, from sort of an information high level what's actually going on with our code. Um, but you can take a look at the logging module uh, documentation to see what other things you might want to extract from logging. So again, we're just making use of the same code that we had before, just to kind of very briefly review what that code does. We create a shared resource value object. Uh, we create a lock object. And then what we do is we create two processes, one which calls this function add 500, which basically all it does is it loops through each of the integers from 0 to 99, sleeps a little bit, and then acquires a lock to make sure that it adds the value, releases the lock, and that both of these processes, add process and sub process, are both executed sequentially. And then it starts them up, it joins them to make sure they've actually completed, and then it prints out the value at the end. So we start off with 500, we add 500 to it, it gives us 1,000, we subtract 500 from that, it gets back to the original value of 500. So let's go ahead and instantiate the locking, uh, or I should say the logging mechanisms that we'll be making use of. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say that I want to instantiate a logger. So the way I do that is I just call this, lo this function log to standard error, which is going to say, go ahead and print out all the logging information to the terminal as we run this code. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a logger object. So I'm going to say logger is equal to git logger. And this is again, uh, both of these things are being imported from the multiprocessing library. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say logger.setLevel. And this is essentially telling the logger what level do we actually want to see this information at. Do we want to see debugging information? Do we just want to see information corresponding to what the code is actually doing? And just to keep this video somewhat concise, I'm just going to say that I want to see just kind of the basic information. And the way I do that is I pass in this variable, which is logging.info. So this is a specific thing where the dot, uh, it could be dot debug, or in this case, dot info. This is the type of information that we're going to be printing out from the logger uh, to actually see what is happening as we run this piece of code. So that is going to kind of instantiate our logger, and then we're going to run our code, join it, and then print out the value. So we, before we actually print out the value, we'll see all this login information be displayed on the screen. So I'm going to write this, and then I'm going to clear the terminal. So I'm going to say clear, and then I'm going to say python multiprocessing underscore login, which is the name of this file. If I run this, we notice that these uh, messages pop up here. So we can see that we have info slash process one. So this is the name associated to the first process given by the multiprocessing library. And it's letting us know that it's calling the run method of that process where it's actually starting up. And then right after that in sequence, we have the second process, which corresponds to the subtract 
method, which is being called there. Process two shuts down, process two exits, process one shuts down, and process one exits. And then at the end, we have our print value, which is the end of the um, end of the file there. And then right at the end, this main process is letting us know that this has actually reached the end of the Python script that we ran. So it's saying that this entire Python script that we just ran, shutting down, and that's the end of the uh, execution of our code. So this is meant to be fairly concise. You might want to print this out for whatever reason to get a little bit more information when you're running something with multiprocessing. What tends to happen sometimes when you're dealing with all of these different processors is it's good to kind of see a little bit more information because things can tend to go wrong if you're putting out all these processes on these different processors and it's good to get a grasp on what's actually happening. So this logging uh, module it hopefully will allow you to do that. So that's pretty much it for this video. We didn't really do a whole lot and that's kind of a good thing. We didn't do a whole lot to get the logging information running on this. So if you want to download this code, which again is very similar to the code that we had from the lock video, the link is in the description. You can go ahead and download that. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section and I will see you in the next video. Thanks again.